All right, so let us uh, begin our bi-weekly sutra uh, discussion. Um, so good evening to all, all the venerable uh, monks and may all blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma, the Sankha, be with you. Uh, and we also would like to say uh, good evening to our friends uh, who are going to um, watch us uh, on uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook Live. Uh, so let us begin uh, our session by paying respect to the Buddha by reciting Namo Tassa three times together. Namo Tassa Bhagavatu Samma Sambhutasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambhutasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambhutasa I pay my respect and homage uh, to him, the blessed one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened Buddha. Uh, dear venerable uh, sirs, uh, dear friends in uh, Dhamma, uh, it is such a great joy to have your presence uh, for uh, this bi-weekly uh, sutra discussion. Um, and I, I would like to introduce all of you to our audience uh, who are watching us on YouTube and uh, Facebook Live. Uh, let me uh, begin with uh, Bhante Yoga Vacha Rahula. <clears throat> uh, we all know him. He is joining uh, us uh, from Washington, D.C. And uh, we have uh, uh, Bhante uh, Saranapala, <laughs> Madhu Saranapala and uh, Bhante Damika, both of them are uh, joining us from Vancouver, uh, Canada. And then we have Bhante Dinananda joining us from Ottawa, Canada. Then we have Bhante Revata joining us from uh, Toronto, uh, Canada. Then we have Bhante Shanta Sobana joining us from uh, Los Angeles. And then we, uh, we have Bhante Sankicha joining us from um, Detroit, uh, Michigan, USA. And then we have Bhante Kusala joining us from here, <laughs> Mississauga, Toronto. And then we have uh, uh, Venerable Saikadita. Uh, you're joining from us from Montenegro, <laughs> Europe. <laughs> so wonderful to have you. This is your first uh, time joining this bi weekly sutra discussion. And uh, we have uh, Bante Nalaka joining us from Arizona, USA. And then we have Bante Omar Nanda. I think his, he has his camera off. And Bante Vimala Jyoti and Bante Sivali. Uh, so they, they are from here. So um, uh, this is a kind uh, reminder to our friends uh, who are watching us on social media, uh, Facebook and YouTube live. If possible, please uh, share this program in social media timelines uh, for the greater benefit of uh, the people. I know I think uh, whatever we are discussing today is going to be of immense benefit to everyone. And uh, we are doing this biweekly uh, discussion uh, to bring light and hope to the people, especially. Uh, uh, during this time, you know, people are confused because of what's uh, uh, 
uh, happening in, in, in Ukraine. Uh, and there, there's a lot of anger and hatred growing and in the minds and hearts of people. And there are confusions, uh, people um, are worried and anxious and uh, falling into depression. And uh, during this COVID time, and I think we uh, uh, Buddhist monastics in the Western world are uh, coming together in this Zoom platform to uh, bring the words of uh, positivity, words of healings and light. Uh, so through this Dhamma, uh, I believe people can see the light. It will help them to get out of the ignorance or darkness uh, and negativities. Uh, so last week, we uh, uh, discussed about the war and peace of the Buddhist perspective. It was uh, uh, a well-watched uh, discussion, uh, and pe the, the people greatly appreciated your words of wisdom. And uh, so today, uh, we, we are going to discuss on the topic, entangled within and outside. Um, healing the world with uh, wisdom. Uh, so uh, we uh, uh, have uh, monks and nuns who are experts and your well-versed in Dhamma. So let us uh, bring or tell a story or let's uh, share some uh, words of light, hope, wisdom, uh, healing. And I think uh, there are people who are watching us uh, for that purpose. And now uh, the question is, uh, what is the way to untangle the entangled world? Who can do this? Um, and this is the difficult time for the world. And when you watch news uh, or go to social media, you see people are confused, people are spreading negativities, and people are entangled with a lot of problems. Now, what can we do and how can Dhamma help us to untangle this entangled world? So uh, let me begin with uh, Bhante Yoga Vajra I know Bhante, you, you were busy with uh, conducted retreats for past couple of weeks and we missed, you, you, we missed your presence during our past two discussions. And we are very happy to have you today. And Bhante Rahula, what can you say? Well, you know, this question was put to the Buddha himself. Uh, and there was a group of devas that were pondering this question about the inner tangle and the outer tangle. Mm -hmm. So they came down to uh, the Buddha and asked him uh, this question. Uh. This world is entangled in a tangle. And who succeeds in disentangling this tangle? Uh. And the Buddha's reply to them was, when a person is grounded well in virtue, or the, you know, sila, and develops concentration, and wisdom, they succeed in disentangling this tangle. Mm. So that was the Buddha's uh, answer to this very question. Yeah. Now it comes to then defining what is the inner tangle and what is the outer tangle. <laughs> and the tangle itself is the Buddha defined as craving. And the craving that's entwined with all of the six senses, the craving for sights, sounds, smells, taste, uh, tangible sensations, and even the, the tangle of our thoughts, mm -hmm. tangled up in the past, the future, with uh, craving, and which also means aversion. So whenever we talk about craving, it uh, automatically is the opposite, implies the opposite of aversion or hatred because hatred arises because of our attachments mm. and uh, if somebody threatens what we believe in or threatens our security 
or our personal things, that's when we get angry, right? Because uh, yeah. so, <clears throat> and so it's the craving for those. The outer tangle is the world of sensory objects, and the inner tangle is the way that we've uh, reacted and interreacted with those objects our whole lifetimes or over uh, many uh, past lifetimes as well. Those memories of objects, desires and aversions, of course, uh, you know, are carried over as well. And then we, as we grow up, we get entangled even with more. So, and that's basically because uh, people don't understand the nature of the mind. Yeah. We've never been taught how the mind works. And only somebody like the Buddha comes around and uh, really explains how this mind works. Even modern psychology today, even though they know a lot about the mind and so on, uh, they, they can't explain the way the mind works the way the Buddha explained it mm. in terms of uh, the sixfold sense sphere and of the five aggregates and how it's been bound up and caught in the web of uh, craving and desire and aversion. And it, basically it's because of ignorance, not understanding the nature of the mind. And the mind has become entangled uh, with uh, this whole entanglement. So who succeeds in disentangling it? Basically it's a explanation of the Noble Eightfold Path. Mm. There's a Noble Eightfold Path, as we all know, is yeah. divided into sila, Samadhi and Pranya, which are those three categories the Buddha mentioned. When somebody is well established in virtue, which is sila, and develops uh, concentration, mindfulness and concentration, uh, they develop the, the wisdom. Mm. And it's only through that wisdom, actually, that uh, can, can see the tangle. Mm. Most people can't see their mind and, and can't see how their mind is so caught up. It's only when we meditate that we can actually, first we have to calm the mind to uh, make it calm and clear so we can see how intricately caught up it is. So, you know, the whole teachings of the Buddha, you know, the Noble Eightfold Path, uh, that is the path for uh, beginning to untangle this tangle of the mind and it's tangled with the senses and it starts with the right understanding, and that's the intellectual understanding, at least having the intellectual understanding that uh, this is the nature of the mind and consciousness and suffering. Mm -hmm. And basically the whole Four Noble Truths is about also deciphering this uh, tangle. Mm -hmm. So just as a kind of a, a basic uh, overview of that, uh, of that phrase, Mm -hmm. uh, that is, uh, you know, how, how the Buddha taught the Dhamma and how all of us as Buddhist practitioners are, you know, have begun or continue to disentangle this tangle of, of karma. Basically, it's uh, being tangled up in the, all of the, the causes and effects that we've been creating. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, from the Buddhist perspective, that is how a person uh, starts disentangling this tangle and therefore the suffering that arises from it as well. Mm. Now, th thank you, Bhante uh, Rafala, for uh, beautifully explaining uh, that uh, the teachings coming from the, uh, is, uh, the Jata, Jata Sutra, right? <laughs> Jata Sutra. Well, it's the very preamble of the Visuddhimagga. Yeah, uh, yeah. The whole Visuddhimagga. Yeah. is a direct answer to uh, to the disentangling the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, now, is there any venerable who would like to add uh, anything to this discussion on this topic? Uh, uh, I'm just kind of wondering, uh, but, uh, by the way, you know, I'm also very happy to uh, have uh, Bhante uh, Shanti Vimala. Uh, he's joining us from uh, uh, from Detroit, <laughs> Michigan, and uh, he is actually one of my teachers uh, from the 
Peradin University. And so it's a great honor to have you, Bante Shanti Villa. And, uh, and also for the first time, we are having uh, Bante uh, Damika, actually. He's, uh, uh, Bante Damika, how would you, uh, is there anything you would like to add into discussion on today's topic? Yes, uh, thank you. And Nanamudana Venerable says, uh, simply I would like to add to this topic. Uh, when we talk about uh, this kind of uh, questions, first thing is we have to uh, let other people to know how about the valuable uh, opportunity uh, to having this kind of uh, hu being a human life. Dullabancha manusatang, being a human is so rare. Mm. Being a human is so rare. It comes in uh, the Buddha's teachings clearly. Whether uh, people believe in rebirth or not, but still, just we have to let them to know being a human is so rare. By thinking this way, you have to use this rare opportunity to have lots of good things towards yourself at the same time towards other people, other beings as well. And then, according to the Buddha's noble teachings, there are two things, there are major uh, two parts of his teachings, just we have to uh, keep in our mind, which are absolute truth and conventional truth. Mm -hmm. uh, Samut, uh, Samuti Satcha and Paramatta Satcha. Mm -hmm. Samuti Satcha means uh, simply conventional truth. Uh, Paramatta Satcha means uh, simply absolute truth. Of course, people are struggling to have desirable things. Piyarupe Sarajyati, Apiyarupe Vyapajyati. People are always grasping things to have what they like. Mm -hmm. If they don't like, just they are going to react towards that with anger or aversion. That's the mm. problems. Therefore, of course, according to conventional truth, you have to act accordingly. But mm. keep in your mind, you have to be disciplined. Mm. You have to be disciplined. It depends on your religion, in, uh, on your belief, on your customs, culture. There are so many things. But still, just we have to know what is humanity, what humanity is. Humanity means human feelings of love and compassion. Mm. Humanity means love and compassion is mm. common for everyone, everybody. Mm. Therefore, you have to have lovely things. But uh, especially in Buddhist teachings, just we are, uh, we introduce as metta. Metta means mm. not love anyway. Love mm. means kind of selfish. But metta means without asking for anything in return. Without mm -hmm. asking for anything in return, we are ready to spread over. That means metta. Of mm -hmm. course, simply you have to say, I love you. But just we have to know what metta is. And then we have to imply into love. That means, of course, being a loving person, respect yourself. At the same time, respect others. Because according to the Buddha's teachings, upamankata, you have to have your own life as example. You don't know to be you don't know to be beaten by anyone else because everybody loves themselves. By thinking this way, of course you have to be disciplined and then respect everybody. Respect everybody equally, whether you like or not. At the same time, we have to know what uh, Paramatta Satcha means. Nothing mm. is nothing is permanent. Mm. Anything, nothing is permanent. Everything is Im impermanent. Transient are all component th things. And then we know how to act with uh, Samuti Satcha. At the same time, we have to face for Paramatta Satcha. That means nothing is permanent, everything is impermanent. Mm. By saying these kind of teachings, we are not going to invite anyone to cry, but to realize what, what's happening. And then uh, we have to know everything is impermanent, why we are going to violate any kind of humane feelings or societal mm -hmm. or whatever just we are going to label on it. But still, we know nothing is permanent. And mm -hmm. then we have to work harder, study well. When we talk about lay people, uh, it depends on their wishes and thoughts. They have to get married, have kids, do their jobs, uh, and they make money. Do your moral duties, that's fine, but still, Remember, any time we may leave this world keeping everything behind. It doesn't mm. matter how much we love each other. That's the real truth by mm. thinking this way. 
and then we are going to comfort and console our inner feelings and then how about our outer feelings of course and then we feel uh, my mind is uh, so calm and quiet this is that actually simply we have to let other people to know mm. Bhante. yeah so now that the uh, Bhante Dambika you have actually shed a lot of light uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, teachings you uh, brought forward uh, which uh, uh, have the power to bring healings i think if people can understand uh, uh, these uh, teachings i think it would be of immense benefit to them so yeah. now uh, the 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 real question oh we also have sister kema joining us from uh, india <laughs> it's the early very early morning for you <laughs> thank you for joining us um, so now of, of course people are going through this difficult time uh, people are having People are holding grudges, people are harboring anger, and especially those who are going through this, uh, uh, this horrible uh, thing, you know, and this winter, in addition to the, this, this COVID time, in addition to all these problems, then having uh, uh, to go with, through these uh, difficulties, difficult situations, and obviously it's going to make people understand how can we apply this to our life? And how can we see the light? I think this is something that we had to address. And I'm wondering whether you uh, have anything to add into this. You know, they say, of course, there's the outer entangle and there's the inner tangle and people are confused. And of course, we understand, of course, Buddha says, sila, samadhi and panya. And the, these three teachings, these three steps could help us uh, overcome. But to, uh, to those who have no understanding about this, how can we make simple for them to understand? And especially those who are suffering at this time. Do you have anything to add? Uh, Anyone? Uh, Sister Kema, you raised your hand. Uh, you have to unmute. Thank you, Venerable. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> this past uh, few weeks, I think, uh, has been difficult in many ways for uh, our center and for our teacher. And we've been going through a great deal of change as far as aging is concerned and witnessing his... Uh, difficulties that he's been going through and facing. And uh, I also have been struck with the, the uh, human body mm. and uh, had to uh, take a break and go. I spent March, I'm spending basically uh, medical issues and I ended up ill with a, with a uh, climate cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had the wonderful opportunity of being put in one of my favorite places when I was going for dental work, uh, which was surgery. Um, we, our group supports us in Bandra, and um, they put me in a children's hospital whenever I go there that is owned by one of the students. And in the middle of the night, I couldn't sleep, you know, but <clears throat> I couldn't talk a lot, but I could still speak. And um, one of the doctors came in on a late shift and, and knew I was there and asked for help. And this is the kind of thing that uh, Buddhism is such a, to me, is like a miracle worker. Mm. Buddhism brings to us a balancing bar for mind, brings us a balancing bar for both mind and body. And um, this doctor who came in, uh, you know, even though I wasn't feeling good, it just, I felt so much better to be able to listen to her for about a few, you know, 10, 15 minutes and hear her agony of what was going on in her family uh, for her husband and her and her mother-in-law. And this was a, a pretty standard story uh, since COVID happened of uh, being forced to live with the uh, parents again and losing your home, losing your jobs, things like that and then having to keep work and struggling with trying to be kind and trying to be happy, but not having the basic knowledge of Buddhism, the basic, basic teachings 
that I think probably Venerable Rahula spoke some to before I was here. And what we have is a balancing bar for the mind to take the person to a very balanced point so they can see where they really are and reclaim the power of choice, which they don't believe they have when they're in a difficult position. And there she sat opposite me speaking about how everything was happening to her and why is this happening to me and why is this such a struggle and why can't she be kind and why can't this happen and we we forget we forget that the only way that we can change this world, the only way we can change what we feel like is happening to us is by working on ourselves first. And this is the opportunity we have as human beings. And we talked about how lucky she actually was. And she mm -hmm. said, why? I said, because you have craving to deal with right here in your face right now. And then she started talking about how it was all coming down on her and all happening to her. And she started again, almost crying. What can I do? How can I get strong? How can I keep going? Should I quit? Should, what should I do? And I said, I can't tell you what to do, but you have to clear your mind first. And we talked about the simple thing I've often talked about that I forgot about for many years. You know, I've been doing this 22 years now and I forgot about the Bhada Karata Sutta the balancing bar sutta, where everyone assumes that people understand the past and the future and the present. So we started there. And we started with that lesson because I couldn't speak. I asked her the questions, what is the past? Tell me more, what is the past? Oh, it's over, it's fixed, it's done. Even from this morning, Yes, even from this morning, even from an hour ago when that patient died in the hospital. Yes, even that. You see, you start at the very crux where they are, the very point where they are to balance them. And then what's true about the future? It's not here yet, but you're here with me. Yes, I'm here with you. I'm in this present time. I am in this present time. And so if you stop talking about yourself, stop talking about what's happening to you, think about the fact as a human being, you can make a choice. And she discovered in, I watched the clock, she discovered in about 35 minutes, the past, the future, and the present being just like that, she figured it out. And she believed me and was willing to listen to the fact that the only place that she is alive is in the present time. It doesn't have to be the present moment to begin with. I want to stress this. I actually had a guy come in and had a headache at a retreat because he was trying so hard to stay in the present moment. Uh, but he couldn't do it on his watch. The moment was part of the second, was part of the minute he couldn't do it. He, what should I do? I said, relax. Relax, smile, sit, just watch. You don't have to do anything. If you watch, the mind is waiting for you to just pause, be still, watch. You'll find out that you're alive in the present time. And so she sat there for just a couple of minutes and I said, better, huh? <laughs> she said, yeah, it is better. Well, why can't you start to look at that first and then start working with your bedside manner, with your patients, your kind, your compassionate service worker, look at who you are. You know, we read an article once, Bonte talks about it in an um, over 50s magazine about how a man was retired and he decided to do work with compassion. And now he was completely exhausted, completely wiped out. He had no time for himself. And I'm there. Wait a second. Wait a second. What's wrong with this picture? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're actually we're actually supposed to be having a light time and mm -hmm. be able to decide to practice it's all about practice you don't have to be perfect tomorrow so it's a growth period you know it's a balancing thing and she watched and we talked about that a little bit you see but she talked to me 
she's the one that told me there's no energy left in what happened this morning. There's no energy left in what happened last week. There's no energy in me worrying about what's going to happen. I feel better, she said, just sitting here with you, but I'm not doing anything to you, I said. I'm in a lot of pain and look like chipmunk. I'm all swollen up and I'm just, I'm just sitting here. You're figuring it out. It's your journey. We are the ushers. We are the guides. We get to guide them to open up and see potential of their own mind. And she, her eyes got big. And, she, and I said to her, that's all you need to do. And how do I start? You smile. If you mm. smile... You smile. And the monks were smiling. Go read Majima Nikaya number 89. Read it carefully. The monks were smiling while they were sitting, while they were walking, while they were meditating. They were smiling. So smile and see why. Because when you raise these corners, your mind becomes lighter. And when you become lighter, then you begin to have hope. There's something more, something more for you. Mm. You see, you yeah. are powerful. And all she had to see was that. That's all she needed. And then we talked about a simple practice. When you feel like you're getting tight, that's when you're personally starting to take things personally. Do you have to take things personally? At the end of the day, if you don't believe me, sit down and write what happened today. Write down what happened today between you and so-and-so. And when you got angry, now turn the page and write it again. And this time when you write it down, what if you had chosen not to take that person personally at all or whatever it was about and you watched them and then you forgave them and then you took your loving kindness, you brought it up and you started to use that, just sending that to them. And what you did was you quietly smiled. You remembered all you had to do was sit in that little space called the present. And why is it the present? It's not just Buddhism. The Christians say the past is history, the tomorrow is a mystery, and the present time is given to you. And the Buddha gave this to you. He gave you that present time. Mm -hmm. yeah, then he so gave I, you a I lot think, of I descriptions. Think... A lot of basic descriptions about how to support that in the, in the Four Noble Truths, how to discover it, how to work with it. And in the five precepts, if you keep them, then you're not struggling with your mind, with the pain mm. of what you did. You see, you keep moving, you keep developing. Anyway, 15 yeah. minutes. She yeah, walks yeah. away, no more tears. She comes back a few hours later and she said, you know, sister... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Kema. You know, you, you brought a lot of uh, wonderful teachings. Uh, 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 you know, I think we, we can discuss uh, more on that. And I think if, if we can expand more uh, uh, in, in line with these uh, teachings found in the Badirika Sutta, I think uh, just uh, reflect more on this. And I, I, I will be inviting you, uh, inviting you to add more uh, insights into today's discussion. And so today we also have a, a new monk, uh, Bhante Panya. <clears throat> I think this is your first time. Uh, you're from uh, America, but you live in, in Thailand. It's uh, early morning for you. And, and also you raised your hand. Uh, I would like to uh, invite you to say a few words. You know, maybe you can add, uh, shed more light into today's discussion. Bhante Panya. Sato Namasaka, Namasaka, everybody. Sato Namasaka. I'm calling from Thailand, and uh, it's pretty early. Uh, I took this opportunity to meet more Western and English speaking monks. I live in the area, and I've been here for such a long time, but I never really meet English, proper English speaking monastics or monks. So um, I took this time to introduce myself and uh, say hello to everybody and all the Thira. Mm. I see yeah. there's a lot of members here from uh, Sri Lanka. You guys look very beautiful. I'm very happy to be here with you guys. Mm. Uh, I'm not I'm not exactly sure. I came in a little late, unfortunately, what the question was. 
but um, um, I, I guess I want to share just a small piece of uh, information that always helps me, um, that always helps me uh, daily when I'm out in my practice, and that is um, uh, the world is filled with so much war and so much confusion, but it's my choice whether I want to carry that luggage with me mm. or I want to carry my own things with me. Mm. And I have to always be conscious where not to carry somebody else's war for my own peace, just so I can be a part of the in crowd or part of the uh, the way that is uh, the way that the waves are moving. And when I kind of remember that and expound upon that more inside my mind, I find that there's more happiness and tranquility that is. Uh, uh, shaping my my thoughts and my actions throughout the day. It might not happen every day, but it does shape and um, and guide my actions. And at least it's a thought that is inside my mind that whenever I feel agitated or frustrated, I need to find out whose luggage am I carrying because this mm -hmm. doesn't belong to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think it's a deep wisdom. Uh, it, it, it is a choice that we, we have to make. There is a Zen saying, right? Uh, either let go or be dragged. <laughs> but if, you, if you're carrying someone else's <laughs> luggages, it's going to be uh, full of suffering or uh, more, more problems, right? So I think it's a, it's a great point. Thank you, Bhante Panya, for adding that wisdom. So uh, Bhante uh, Shanta Soban, actually we have uh, uh, monks who raise their hands. And I, I think as, uh, as we are discussing this, uh, there are a lot of wisdom coming out. So uh, let's uh, invite Bhante Shanta Sobhana uh, to add more wisdom into today's discussion. Yeah. So thank you very much, Venerable Sirs, and giving me this opportunity. So when it comes to healing, so we have to understand why, why we have to heal somebody. Mm. So because we all are wounded, yeah. You know? So we all are kind of like uh, carry the loaded guns, and uh, <laughs> you know, ready to <laughs> ready to fire. So when when we have that understanding ourselves first, it's kind of like uh, without interfering, we we need the kind of like uh, ability to step back, mm. Be, uh, because otherwise that uh, with the wounded way that if we interfere we always going to bring more problems to the situations rather than finding solutions. So then we have to understand how we can repair ourselves before we repeat. Mm. So it is a kind of like, then we have to see how we get entangled because when we have inner resistance, it always twists the perceptions. Mm. So, so that inner resistance that itself we, we call another way the vipa, uh, vipallasa. So then mm -hmm. when whatever the, the perception that come to us, we understand in a wrong way. Mm -hmm. So for that, we need, a, we need a inner discipline to develop ourselves to, to calm down. And at the same time, we have to purify ourselves. So that mm -hmm. purification it's a kind of like a way we get healed first ourselves, and then we can, through that process, we can share the things with others. So I want to bring a story for that. Mm -hmm. How, because when it comes to the situations, how we can handle that situations. So one of the beautiful stories, the venerable Radha, that the, he was a very young, and before he become a monk, he was a very young, and uh, he had a very luxurious life. Mm. So this Radha, and he was the only one child in the family and the parents a uh, little bit getting old. Then the, the, but he didn't learn anything and he used to spend so much money and having fun. Mm. So one day the parents having a discussion and told, you know, that uh, one day when we die, this child don't know how to handle his life. So it's better we should give some wisdom to him. Mm. So then the parents call him 
and he had, and he had a, a very beautiful mansion and uh, they brought him here and then told dear son you don't know how to handle this anything so it is better you learn to become a beggar because why <laughs> once we die you going to be a beggar mm. so then he he accepted so then he, he then the parents told him kind of like uh, some qualities how you can how you can become a beggar so one is the very first thing contentment so as who you are you have to be happy and have the contentment so when we come to our life the get heal ourselves one of the most most important thing if we develop the contentment within ourselves and understand this moment that we experience is the completion of this everything in our life mm-hmm. it's give a kind of like a satisfaction to ourselves so and at the same time then the second quality when somebody gives something remember to appreciate the that what you receive mm-hmm. the 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 third one and also pay your gratitude to the the giver whoever the person and the fourth one don't don't ask unnecessary questions <laughs> so so that four qualities and mm. he used to practice and by by the time the parents died and he became a beggar he used to beg in front of his own house mm. so but still he used to follow that four qualities contentment mm. and whatever he received every day he was used to be happy with that and he used to take care of and whoever give something and he appreciate the giver and at the same time he not going behind the people and interfere and asking unnecessary questions so then one day venerable sariput went for pinda path and it mm. was almost 12 o'clock and the this this young rather the beggar was in front of the house waiting for food the household the they create some food and brought to the rather and at the same time he saw this venerable sariputta come towards that way and the rather thought oh it is almost 12 i am a beggar i can find the food from anywhere but this monk can't find the food after 12 so what he did he stepped back and gave the opportunity for venerable sariputta to get that food so then after another day he went to the, temp- the this radha went to the the temple and uh, found some leftover food and was eating then the the monk saw that mm. and the monk saw that and the monks appreciate him oh look at this radha how is he was a millionaire and he was he had a very luxurious life now he is a beggar but still he is happy still mm. he is a respectful person he, he still he has a way to maintain himself without disturbing to anybody so in, when they having that discussion the buddha came so then the buddha asked that uh, what the discussion going on then the uh, monks told oh venerable sir it's about the radha so then the buddha asked is anybody got any help out of uh, from radha so then venerable sariputta told oh venerable sir one day when i go to pindapatha so the this young radha gave his food for me and he was waiting there but he stepped back and gave me the opportunity and then the buddha told then you should go and find him and bring him and uh, give the opportunity to become a monk <laughs> so that day he became a monk and uh, In, in the evening he went to the buddha and asked venerable sir what is what is this life what is the meaning of life and then the buddha told that the, there is nothing that only this perception we get out of i e a no stung body mind is the life so and with that that it the deeply it give the understanding how we can heal ourselves 
it is just not because if we carry our wounded life itself without developing ourselves and gaining the qualities to ourselves and uplifting ourselves we never going to repair this anything in this life we, we keep adding more problems to the society so that is the very basic method of the 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 recovering method that we call the cultivation of the mind that's how the buddhist meditation with the mm. samatha and vipassana in samatha meditation it bring the tranquility <clears throat> mind to us keep the balance so when we have the balance we have ability to gaining to equanimity so that is the best way to address the society because when we have the equanimity that's mean we have ability to arrive at the same time with others mm. otherwise we create a kind of like a resistance if we resist we can't ex- experience the life so in that way that to heal people because i i used to do healing you know mm. long time you know i used to practice acupuncture and and at the same time i used to do this pranic healing when it come to healing it to heal the major important thing is the trust if you don't have trust there is no way you can heal a person mm. so mm. when it come to trust that trust bring the confidence that uh, to go with even in the when the modern medicine that uh, we see when we going to take any medicine we see is it safe for us the safety is the first mm. so when we develop the good qualities within us it it help others to trust us and it it give the ability to share and at the same time it build the build the 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 connection in between other people and that connection will help to uplift the situation so i think uh, we need come to healing that building trust and uh, the sharing it and caring the other people and appreciating is the one of the major important thing mm. that we have to remember yeah no these are these are great words uh, thank you thank you uh, bante santo sobana especially telling that story of radha you know those four qualities uh, starting with the contentment i think contentment is is a great spiritual virtue and mm-hmm. uh, now uh, of course i i want to invite bante kusala next to add more into this uh, but uh, but before that before bante kusala speaks uh, i would like to remind our audience in, on youtube and facebook if you have any questions uh with respect to today's uh, uh, topic and discussion and uh, please feel free to uh, make a comment and uh, my assistant uh, david uh, will uh, help me get those questions from you and if you have any questions please uh, make a comment and i will take your question uh so especially i want to uh, emphasize on like you know uh, of course we all are adding m- uh, great wisdom into today's discussion now let's say imagine the people who are uh, in trouble let's say for for example uh, those refugees right they have to leave their country their leave their home and the family and living in a uh, in a foreign environment and to such people of course i know they're entangled right they're entangled they have become hopeless uh, they, they they see uh, uh no uh, great difficulty in their life to such people what can we say and how can we heal them bante kusala thank you bante for that great question uh, well when you come to a situation uh, like that where you are abandoning your former village your house your love for that mm. um, your memories your relatives and now you are moving to a new location mm. uh, and you are being helped by another country complete strangers so in a situation like that you know i can see that the entanglement is clear mm. the confusion is clear fear is very much uh, present mm. confusion is present uncertainty is 
so much like so there's so much uncertainty in your mind mm. and um for that i think uh, i would say we can learn from a simple story uh, to have a perspective um have this perspective toward everything mm. uh, this is the the farmer's story known to many uh, so this farmer had a perspective toward everything uh, when anything happened he said his response was maybe it may not be maybe and be so one time um, this farmer the only horse he had ran away and villagers came and said you know how unfortunate it is that you know now you don't have any income and the farmer's response was maybe maybe may not be so and a uh, couple of days later this horse came back with few other horses and mares and villagers came and said you know how wonderful now you have more horses <laughs> farmer's response was you know maybe may not be so and again uh, the farmer's son you know climbed one of these horses to tame it and uh, he fell and he broke his leg and villagers of course came and said you know how unfortunate that it happened mm. and the farmer's response was maybe may not be so again couple of days later the government started a war somewhere and came to uh, bring all these young able bodied men to the war and they spared this uh, broken legged son and again uh, villagers came and said how fortunate now your son is with you but our sons are gone even then the farmer's perspective was maybe may, may not be so so uh, this is the world where we live we know we we live in a lot of information coming to us mm. the first advice i would give is you know before this news come and tangle you i would say turn off your tv every day you know don't watch any of that <laughs> no you never know who's bringing the truth to you mm. and your interest in these things you know if you cut off that tangle inside of you you are going to be so free because on top of dealing with a pandemic we are also dealing with an infodemic so much information come into you mm-hmm. and your mind doesn't know how to really uh, believe that that trust that bhante santo sobana mentioned earlier i think we we have a lot of trust issues about a lot of media channels and news mm-hmm. sources um so that you know that's why somebody said you know i find tv so educating every time someone turns on a set i get a book and read the book <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's it's like you do you can you can find information through different ways you know in a controlled way instead of sitting there and waiting for any news to come mm. so i think uh, that perspective will uh, add some light into your life you know no matter what situation you are in you accept it and say you know maybe this is good maybe this is not good it doesn't matter so we will see it's so liberating to have that kind of perspective i'm also going to add a little you know little bit of uh, insight into the tangled within tangled outside um as i have been learning from different teachers you know tangled within goes into the philosophy of how you see uh, how mentality and materiality work together connect mm. together nama and rupa connect together and tangled outside bahijata refers to how this mentality and materiality connects with consciousness vijnana six classes of consciousness and i think this um, understanding sheds lights into you know our own issue at hand you know Uh, how are we going to untangle this you know just like that deva the divine being had that problem we too can untangle it by looking uh, into us within us we find uh, the way out and light so from darkness to light you know that switch can be uh, turned on by ourselves and you have the whole power thank you bhante 
Yeah, I, I love that story, you know, uh, the story of the horse story. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> so I, I think uh, uh, if people can really understand uh, the, 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 the nature of this story, it will be of great healing. Uh, so uh, I know um, we have a, a nun joining us from Montenegro, uh, Venerable Saikadita. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, whether you have anything to share with us uh, uh, with respect to today's uh, uh, discussion. Thank you, Bhante. Thank, uh, respect to all the monks and nuns today. Yes. And I'm very, very glad to be part of a group that can, obviously, I'm hoping will change the way people will think. Uh, mm. Today, I'm in London uh, visiting my teacher, so I'm a little bit close to to the North America, one hour less, so yeah. a little bit early in time, which worked out quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, but just listening to the monks today, uh, very, very obviously informative to lay people. Um, so in my personal experience, I feel uh, like Bhante Santra Sopana said, uh, trust is a very important thing. Uh, before I became a nun, I was a dentist for 25 years. And uh, I treated, obviously, treating a patient, uh, very important to have trust. If not, no matter what you do, how good you are, you, you can't heal them. Mm. Uh, and yes. And also, uh, like most of the Bhantis talked about, it's, um, it's important that we, even though we're individuals, we're all connected. Uh, human beings and animals, we all have a connection. Uh, the problem is, People uh, feel, especially uh, in the develop, you know, as humans have developed over the years, the media and everything around them, the environment, people kind of get caught up with everything and they lose their sense of identity. And so it's always good to take time out, step back, reflect on yourself and look at yourself uh, within and figure out, like, un try to understand what's going on in the mind, and then look at, you know, like, once, like, it's a bit like once when something is clear, like, if a mirror is clear, you can see it's the image much more clearly. So, if your, uh, you know, your your mind is more still, your conscious becomes more clearer. Mm. You you see things in a, a much, you know, like an open uh, way um, and uh, so then you tend to look at uh, you don't tend to judge as much and because judge, judging is is not a very good thing uh, mm. with, um, yeah and with people the tangle and the tanglement becomes worse and worse when you start to compare uh, like what you have with what others have mm. and um, especially in 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 the west you, you know, when we have so much um, like um, facilities where our countries uh, where people have very little. Uh, mm. And for me personally, uh, where I live in Montenegro, I have a very simple life, live in the mountains. Uh, and But living in the UK, when I come back, I see like uh, people have a, a lot of facilities and uh, they're, they're very blessed to have everything and, and it's good that they have to use it but it's good to be mindful when you use things because you can get trapped in uh, you know the, the, the race as to say mm. um, uh, you, you understand yeah mm. and um, so and then you kind of start to lose your uh, your yourself of uh, your, your identity and you, you you feel like you have to go with the others and I think that's what's happening a lot in the world now with the wars mm. and everything people listen to the media and the media is not always uh, they they want to make money so they will kind of uh, <laughs> bend the truth in order to get people to watch and believe in things that doesn't really exist and um, so we have to, the, the the more karma we are the more clear our consciousness uh, we feel we, we we will see that you know we can kind of distinguish what's it is what's the truth and what isn't mm. 
And going back to uh, like people, obviously, who are like refugees, uh, I, I have very close friends who used to be refugees. And uh, yes, they, they lose their, their sense of like, um, they feel like they, they have been let down by society and uh, they, they feel like worthless. So, mm. and again, if they start to, uh, you know, but the thing is, it's, it's an individual um, journey. If, if one is prepared to work hard, and they 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 see like they have to, they they have um, like a goal in life, uh, and they have the energy to do you know go to it. Uh, I think that's very important. Uh, so and so giving especially for young children, teaching them to have discipline and um, like courage to do something without being scared. <laughs> and, worrying like what other people will you know like say uh, I think it's very very important um, mm. we need that inner strength and yeah. the more stronger we are uh, the, you know we, we, we learn to be more understanding and mm. um, be more successful in what we do in the mm. sense of you know achieving achieving uh, our goals in life as well as obviously as monks and nuns uh, the part that we take uh, it becomes easier uh, the more discipline we have and the more uh, self-strength we have so, mm, so self-discipline discipline is very important for the self absolutely absolutely very yeah. important yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes thank you thank you venerable sakadita mm -hmm. for adding more insights into today's discussion and I would like to put the same question to uh, uh, Bhante Yoga Vachurahula. Bhante, you know this. Uh, I, I know I'm, I'm looking. In, I'm looking at these situations in different uh, perspective. Now people are really suffering. You know, let's say they are separated. Uh, they they separate from the husbands, parents, kids, and no homes. Uh, they are living in a foreign country. And, and it's, it's, it's a bitter cold, it's a winter, and uh, living in a, in a different environment is, is a real discomfort for them. Uh, and, and they are going through so much. So to heal such people, Bhante, what can we do? As, 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 as Buddhist monks and nuns, as Buddhists, what can we do, Bhante Rahul? Well, <clears throat> I... I mentioned at the beginning that, of course, the, we all know that the Buddhist teaching is the way people can heal. Yeah. And, uh, but they have to, you know, has to be explained to them in a way that they can uh, easily, uh, you know, access it. Now, a person in a refugee condition and all these uh, terrible sufferings, you can't expect them to say, sit down and watch your breath and expect them to be able yeah. to concentrate their mind. Yeah and uh you know get any success because immediately they're going to start worrying about their loved ones back home or where they're going to be sent to and and so on because we all know that when we started meditating it's not easy even though we weren't a lot of us were not in such crisis conditions as refugees but even living in a you know fairly uh, uh affluent in uh places like the, the west uh you know, it's, it's, uh, it's hard for us even to do it. So, uh, of course, the, and to, to tell them just to be in the present moment and also, also, even though these are ultimately ways to get to that point, uh, you know, but they should be fortunate that they've actually escaped the where they are. Mm. So to be grateful with what they have, I mean, what they had and then the suffering they went through and now they're in a new place and for most of them they'll be being treated very uh, kindly and uh, you know uh, people are sh showing them a lot of love and so they have to have gratitude for that and and try to uh, you know just to be in the moment and not think so much about how it was and to enjoy and have gratitude and uh, try to make the best of their new conditions mm. uh, as best they can. And, and 
you know, apart from that, I mean, I think that's, you know, if they can do that, that will be the best thing that they they can do. And of course, once uh, they get more, uh, you know, accepted in their new way of, of life and can start, uh, you know, you know, be more relaxed about it, then hopefully, then if they practice, med- learn to practice, um, you know, meditation and and so on, then they can, uh, you know, eventually uh, go deeper into calming uh, their minds. But I think that, uh, as you know, somebody was mentioning previously, we have to have that gratitude for what we have and what people are doing for us uh, now, and then uh, make the best of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, until we get to the point where we might be able to then help people that we've left behind, but just uh, worrying about it we won't help them. Now, what, what I'm, uh, uh, you know, Bante, I'm so happy to see you know, some news and some pictures, like how uh, families, some families, they open their houses, you know, they are welcoming. Uh, and to see that humanity, I, I, I wish if all global citizens could be like that, could be that kind of kindful citizens, I think we are going to have heaven on earth. <laughs> so we can see that uh, that's happening in so many countries are, uh, you know, telling their people to, you know, open up and accept more and more refugees into their houses, not yeah. just to put them in a hotel, but, you know, actually bring them into their houses and show them how to get adjusted to their new uh, environment. Mm. Now, when I was asking this question from Bante Rahula, Sister Kema, uh, something was going on in your head. Even you almost raised your hand. What, what's that? Would you like to share? I, you have to unmute yourself. Uh, I was I was following what everyone was saying, and I heard a lot of um, how are we going to heal them? Uh, why? Uh, but the question we should be asking ourselves. I, I I did this when I was first involved with my teacher. And uh, I would get so overwhelmed. I have to help this person. I have to heal this person. And now I am a a nun. I will be able to do this. Yeah. And then, but I kept practicing. I kept watching. And uh, we, I forgot. And he would point to me. Is it really true? No. Are you supposed to heal them? And I would say, what do you mean? And uh, he would say, you're not supposed to heal them. You are supposed to show them the path to heal themselves. This Mm. is what the Buddha gave us. He Mm. gave us this path to teach them to heal themselves. And Rahula, Abanti Rahula just hit on one of the greatest pieces is the uh, gratitude for the fact I'm alive today. The fact that I got here and I'm safe for the moment. And taking that, and he just actually spoke about the Bada Karata Sutta. The past is mm-hmm. gone, the future isn't here, stay in the present time. That's that one. And then forgiveness. We can give the person, give the person a daily, uh, a daily pattern. And mm-hmm. the breathing, uh, breathing for ourselves, uh, what comes to mind about uh, we can't we can sit down and and I remember when I first came to Buddhism in Washington D.C. in the temple, uh, the first night I can remember this distinctly, and uh, they said he said sit down and we did breathing meditation first. We were not doing metta in the beginning, okay, and um, I remember going back to the apartment where I was staying and I slept for the first time in five years. In five years, I slept mm. through a whole night. How did it happen? Because someone gave me permission to just breathe. Because I did, I was so uptight about everything happening. And because I was so uptight about the condition of the world and the desperation of wanting to help people, I was overwhelmed. You see? But he said, sit, don't move, just breathe. I mm. forgot. I, that I could just breathe. And for the first time, all of Washington, D.C., all of the madness, it disappeared. It fell into the background. And I was just breathing. So calming to do this. It's such a simple thing. Just breathe. Not for the purpose of breathing meditation, not for Nibbana, not for anything. Just stop. Just breathe. 
Yeah, it was amazing. And then from there, he made us, we, when we started to begin about five, six, seven years into this, uh, you know, see that people wanted to mentor, people wanted to teach maybe. Uh, mentor someone first, share what happened to you with someone, just one. Don't go and try to have a class of 40 people and try to teach what you heard about and everything. Only teach is what the Buddha said. I think it was in 95 in Chanki Sutta. Only teach what you have experienced, what you have seen, what you know. Okay, don't be teaching outside of that unless you've seen it for yourself and experienced it really then it goes across so well to them but we the monastics have this amazing opportunity amazing opportunity to be guides and we had the discussion we don't want to be a guru here in india i don't want to be a guru okay mm. i want to only be a guide that's all i can only show you the pieces so that you can start to do it for yourself and that's the gift we all have. But if we start to think, I must save them, you will fail and you will suffer. I cannot tell you how bad it is. You have to find out maybe, but I'm telling you, you cannot save them. You cannot fix them. You can show them how to fix themselves. Mm. And so the Buddha says in several places, you, you know it better than I knew, how many places he points and how many times in the suttas does he come and save the person? Uh-uh, uh-uh, he doesn't save the person. He shows them, they tell, they tell him the suffering in the front of the sutta. He's, he's repeating how that suffering works. He shows them that. Then he gives them the steps out of the suffering, the other side, the wholesome. Mm. So yeah. these people can, one thing they can do, yeah. remember the boys in the cave. If you think that breathing is not going to help them, remember the boys in Thailand who were in the cave faced with suffocation and death and almost no hope. And the one teacher who was there who said, everybody sit down. Okay, now let's just breathe. Mm. Look at that. Look <laughs> at that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good place, a good place to start. The other thing was we have the message throughout many different systems. Physician, heal thyself mm. first. This is what the physician is taught in medical school. Forget this. And you will not be able to be the surgeon. You will not be able to be a doctor very long. And I have taught doctors who were ready to quit in Sri Lanka, were ready to walk away because they had to see 140 people in one day. Mm. Yeah. But just one day at a time, letting them know that it's one day at a time. That's all. One day at a time. And breathe and have gratitude every day and share with one another. Someone falls, pick them up. Someone doesn't have food on their plate, they were too late, share what you have. It's simple things. That's where we are right now with everyone, everyone. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I, I think what you said is very interesting. You know, uh, doctors can uh, give the prescription, but they can't heal you. You had to take the medicine. So I, this is, a, Dhamma is also the same. I think, thank you so much for uh, bringing uh, is that insight into today's discussion. And also, so, I would like to acknowledge uh, a venerable uh, Thich Nhat Hanh uh, <laughs> So happy to see you. Uh, I know you're from Hamilton, but sometimes you, you go to uh, uh, Vietnam, you live there. I, um, I don't know whether you're here in town, uh, but is there anything you would like to add, Venerable Tishnuka? Uh, you have to unmute. Thank you. Uh, it's nice to see you again, too. Um, no, I'm in Hamilton right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, the only thing, I, I came in a little bit late, so I didn't uh, see the beginning of the discussion, but I am, before I was... Uh, uh, ordained uh, as a bhikkhuni, I um, uh, was a psychotherapist, 
And in my training as a psychotherapist, we were not allowed to even see clients until we had at least done four years of work on ourselves. Mm. So it, it fits in very much with the Buddhist teachings and what Sister Kema was saying, uh, that we, we have to look at ourselves before we can really help anybody else. And with the things that are going on in the world today, um, I have so many people who say they can't sleep and they're worried about everything that's going on. Mm. And I, I tell them we can't, we can't help everybody. Mm. We can't. So find something that's maybe local mm. that you can do to help. And um, by help, I mean you know, help, help at a food bank or something like that. But as far as uh, uh, trying to save the world, it can't be done because it's mm. we're always going to have difficulties, as the Buddha taught. Suffering will always be with us. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Thank you. I, I know uh, in, in Mahayana Buddhist tradition, the the concept of Kuan Yin. You know, mm -hmm. the the Kuan Yin uh, statue, uh, of course, is uh, worshipped as the future Buddha, uh, Buddha Maitreya, and so people go and, or, or let's say, in devotion, pray to uh, Kuan Yin, uh, because Kuan Yin is. Is the is the is symbolic for compassion, embrace, or listening to the uh, painful stories of the people, and, mm -hmm. and, and 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 sharing the love, kindness, compassion, uh, that as if I'm here for you. You can tell me your story. Uh, you can dump all your pains to me, and I'm here to uh, uh, get your uh, suffering. And I let me be the relief uh, to you. And I think that kind of concept is also very interesting during this difficult time. And uh, Bante Nalaka from Arizona. Uh, Bante Nalaka, what do you have to add into today's discussion? Uh, unmute yourself first. Uh, greetings, Sadhu, beloved elder venerables. Yeah. And tick. Yeah, Tin Huang. I come from the Vietnamese tradition. I was a monk for over two years in the Mahayana Vietnamese Truk Lam tradition. And I was in California, now I'm in Arizona. But I like to go back to the theme of entangled within and outside, healing the world with wisdom. Understanding war, its origin, its cessation, and the way that surely leads to the cessation of all wars. And first, that's by living in total harmony with the first mindfulness training, the precept, Parnati Pata Vedamani Sikapadang Samadhyam, living a harmless life, mm. nonviolence, ahimsaka, avihimsa, not only in speech and actions, but in my mind. Mm. Just observing my own mind, I know that I'm not always harmless <laughs> in my yeah. thinking. And it's subtle at times. And so just little mental, for, more fin, mental formations here and there that when not understood, when clung to, can lead to becoming like oh, Vladimir Putin. Just realizing that. The causes mm -hmm. and conditions that led to the creation of the mindset within Vladimir Putin and not allowing that to occur in my own mind stream is powerful. So we can take any Dhamma teaching as a pivot point and go to the origin of stress and dukkha, which is bundled up in war, stealing, lying, trying to expand your empire, strong attachments to views, the view that I am right, that communism is the best system for the world, or even conversely, that democracy is the best system for the world with all of its discontent. So a really short statement, but something to investigate in the mental subtle aspect of the first precept. As long as I'm not harming anyone, I'm watching the news, I'm reading the news, but I'm following my respiration and I'm making sure that I am in harmony with the teachings that I choose as the vehicle for me to attain awakening or enlightenment. And in doing that, people will see the fruit 
the sweet fruit of my actions. And that will inspire them. And one person does that, two people do that, three people do that. And then exponentially, more and more people are awakened. And that's what we as Buddhist monks are doing. Mm. Slowly yet surely, some faster than others, but being the truth, being an example of a stainless, harmless, nonviolent individual for the whole world as a beacon, as a means of inspiration and hope. Sadhu. Yeah, thank you. I think it doesn't matter uh, what uh, side you belong to, autocracy or democracy, it doesn't really matter. As if we can stick to the principle of uh, refraining from uh, taking life, or if we can, uh, uh, you know, practice nonviolence, ahimsa, that I, uh, and then if we can embrace this uh, love, uh, kindness, compassion for all sentient beings, I think uh, uh, then you know we, we would have a peace in the world. And I, I think this there's a great teaching, like. Uh, in Pali, we say, yata ahang tata ete, tata ete yata ahang. As I am, so are they. As they are, so am I. I see if we can all uh, embrace this uh, true metta, I think we can uh, minimize a lot of troubles and violence in the world. Uh, Bhante Shanta Sobana uh, from California, uh, you raised your hand. I'm pretty sure you have more insights to add. Unmute yourself, please. Yeah, actually, I want to add something uh, because uh, I'm from Sri Lanka and most of our Sri Lankan monks know that we went through 30 years war and we know how, how it is and it is, it is so ugly when it comes to the war. Mm. But still, it, it gives us opportunity to, to sharp inside us as who we are. So uh, the example today, that when it comes to today, the, more, uh, the, the most famous person in the world is Ukrainian president. Mm. And why? Because when the situation happened, the, uh, America told him, okay, you can come to America. And he told, no, I'm going to be here with my people. Mm. So, and uh, the most important thing we have to understand the the, according to the Buddha's teaching, no matter what, even our ideas, these situations, even this, we, we today experience uh, uh, quite a good situation here, maybe uh, in the other side of the world, having uh, so much difficulties, but both of this, all the situations, not permanent. Mm -hmm. That is one of the things we always have to think. So maybe they go through a hard time, but for the moment they have to understand it's not for the it's not permanent so that will give a release and at the same time and in any situation that uh, according to what the shanti they were told that uh, all the happiness come to you when you wish others happiness with compassion mm. and uh, all the unhappiness come to you not because of the bullets or the the missiles or not kind of that kind of things or the war, the, all the unhappiness come to you when you think about your own happiness. Mm. So in any, any situation, so we share our thoughts with that whoever suffering in the other side of the world, but at the same time we have to tell, hold on, it's not permanent. Mm. It's going to go away. Mm. Mm. So, so someone, someone who is not grasping this teaching, or who cannot understand this, like in, in action-wise, how can we help people? Let's say, is there any way that we can help these people? Like, uh, we have to put the, uh, our, whatever teachings we are sharing into action. How can we do this? So actually, uh, when, when it comes to that uh, one incident that happened, uh, in Japan, when the tsunami happened, that one mm. guy and he destroyed everything. Mm. So his he and his family, everything he destroyed. Then that uh, I I was watching that uh, on the TV, and then there's uh, this person asked him, 
how are you going to do now? So, and then he told, oh, I'm going to start my life again. So then asked, uh, how are you going to do it? Then he told, I need only just a little bit help because I am a businessman. I'm going to go back to the business. So I, I need that. So like that, maybe today the world is uh, so different and so advanced, you know, and whoever need the help, you know, if, we are, if they're capable to reach to somebody, you know, and through that way, as example, uh, you know, see that uh, during this pandemic times, you know, we used to do Dhamma talk over the, the Zoom and people mm -hmm. used to donate us, you know, through PayPal, you mm -hmm. know. So like that, maybe if they are capable to get into some kind of that system, you know, I don't know what is the situation because uh, that because of the internet problem, they go through hard time. But still, if there is a way that uh, if they can get into that, uh, maybe we can help through financially and at the same time. And there are a lot of, uh, I know some of my students and try to bring some children here to America. Mm. And so like that way. And at the same time, maybe uh, sending things, uh, uh, materially sending things, I don't know how it is it, it applicable, but at the same time, and having uh, this, this kind of discussion and even in the giving them the opportunity for them and knowing, uh, telling them they are not alone, uh, that themselves, they are not alone themselves. And uh, if they need some help, you know, there's a way some of our group of students here, Ukrainian, and even the Russian and the students who ever used to come here, they have organization here and they work together and they try to help for them. And uh, because uh, they have many difficulties with the communication. And so they're doing a lot of things. And at the same time, with these uh, facilities, with the internet and with that all other facilities, I think if anybody need help in a certain mm -hmm. way, there is a possibility. It's not like uh, 10 years, 20 years ago. It's mm. not like that nowadays. <laughs> but only mm. thing is we have to we have to find the right way, right way to access to that. Yeah, so and, and of course we, we all understand the the whole purpose of the Buddhist practice is to alleviate the suffering, human suffering, one's own suffering as much as possible, and finally to end all forms of suffering. Now, uh, of course, people are lost. People have become hopeless. People are in complete darkness. So, of course, let's say if someone is lost in the ocean and if, if we can become the lighthouse, yeah, beacon of light, and of course, they can see, they can come out from that, uh, that sea. Uh, so, in the same way, I think... Uh, if there's any, like in, 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 in uh, Buddhist communities around the world, if there's a way to extend the help to these people in whatever we can, and of course we are doing this discussion, and through this discussion we are shedding light, and also just talking about this is not going to help people. Maybe it will help, but I think if we can put this into action, like... Uh, you know, extending our, our help, uh, being there for them, you know, okay, it's just being, extend your hand, okay, uh, you're in trouble, hold my hand, and, and I can <laughs> take you out from this trouble. Is there any way such thing we could do? I see we have, uh, we don't have actually time, we are running out of time, but today, <laughs> it was a, such a great discussion, and as the final reflection, uh, I would like to invite Bhante Yoga Vacha Rahula to say something uh, for one minute to conclude today's discussion. Bhante Rahula. <clears throat> well, I think probably just to, to send out uh, vibrations of, of metta uh, to all the people not only uh, suffering from the war, but people suffering from their own delusions and their own a mental confusions, sending out these vibrations, if may all beings be well, peaceful and wise, may all beings have the strength and patience, mindfulness, 
and wisdom to meet and overcome all difficulties in life. May all beings have the ability to open their hearts to others and develop friendliness and kindness to all others. May all beings be able to hear the Dhamma and have the opportunity to learn and practice meditation to help free the minds from confusion and suffering. May all beings be able to live peacefully and harmoniously together, understanding the ultimate interconnectedness and the interdependence of all things. May all beings be well, peaceful, and wise. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Bhante Rahula. Now I would like to invite Bhante Jinananda from Ottawa, Canada uh, to recite the Ovada Patamokko verses. Venerable members of Mahasangha, dear friends who listen to this discussion from the beginning, it's a great pleasure to be a part of this discussion. Today I enjoyed the discussion very much by listening. I think uh, to heal the world with wisdom, everybody should listen more than talking. That's what I understood. A lot of talks on healing and wisdom going on. I think too much information makes the problem worse sometimes. So anyway, these great venerables uh, uh, sh showed their wisdom to the world by explaining the beautiful teachings of the Buddha so that we are uh, we are indebted to you all for that. With that in mind, I bless each and everyone. And let us recite Pāti Mokka, or the Pāti Mokka, in that the Buddha, the Buddha speak, the healing through wisdom happens through discipline. So if everybody is able to follow the principles, they can uh, avoid doing bad things and cultivate their mind into the highest. The, so that, that kind of discipline Buddha talks about. Lo, so let me recite the Oa, the Pati Mokka, bringing you peace and everybody else in the world. Sambha papas akaranang kusalas upasampada Sachit pariyo dapanang etang buddhan sasanang kante paramang tapote tikka nibbhanang paramang vadang te buddha Nahi Pabba Jito Parupagati Samano Ti Parang Vihet Yangto Anupavado Anupagato Pati Mukhecha Sangvaro Mat Tanyuta chabatas ming Pantancha sayanas nang Adichitnte chayogo Etang buddhanasasanang Sadhu Sadhu so, so, thank you, Bhante Jinananda, for beautifully reciting those uh, Padmokka verses from the Dhammapada. Uh, it was uh, truly uh, beautiful and blissful and peaceful. So I'm very grateful to all the Venerable Monks and Nuns for uh, coming together in Zoom platform to uh, share words of wisdom, the words of Dhamma uh, expounded by the Buddha, for the greater benefit of everyone who are going through difficult times. Uh, so uh, may for all of you have the blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha for your longevity, good health, uh, happiness, peace of mind. May devas, celestial beings continue to protect all of you 
with the divine blessings for your health and safety during this pandemic. May all blessings be with you. Sabbe Satta Bhavantu Sukhitata. May all sentient beings be happy. Thank you so much. I will, I will see you all in two weeks time for next bi-weekly discussion. Until then, all of you stay well and happy. Good night from Canada. Thank you. <laughs>